Hello, my friends, and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host, Andy Hoyg, publisher and CEO of Metro Magazine and Midlands Business Journal. Today, I'm interviewing an inspiring woman, Jaquel Lane. She's doing amazing things in the community and in the world. She's an author, speaker, educator, and podcaster. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, hello, my friends. I am so excited and honored to be here with, with a dear friend of mine, um, an inspiring, amazing woman, Jaquel Lane. Um, I've known Jaquel for, for over a decade. She is a teacher, an educator, a speaker, a podcaster, an author, and I always like to say, um, for people that I know that have animal companions, a proud puppy parent. Uh, we're going to be talking about a book of hers um, later on, but I just want to officially welcome Jaquel. Thank you for joining me today. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Andy. And um, I cannot sing your praises enough and you're absolutely correct. We've been friends for over a decade, which is crazy to say. And I'm so blessed that you were one of the first people that I made a connection with in Omaha when I moved here. And uh, I admire and love everything that you are doing and have done. So I'm so very honored and, and thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. And also thank you. Um, we interviewed you. You are featured in our Celebrating Women issue that is coming out later this week. Um, a great article. Uh, you are among many amazing women, but your, your story, I just, you know, I learned things about you. I mean, I learned some things about you in this article, even though I've known you for all this time. Um, but let's start, let's just kind of start out where you grew up. What, where, where'd you come from? Because again, it, you know, it certainly wasn't Omaha. No, no, it was not. Um, and it plays an interesting role in the path that I took and, uh, and just kind of the decisions that I made in my life, my upbringing. So I'm from Ogallala, Nebraska, which many people have not even heard of. It's a Western Nebraska community, about 5,000 population. And I had a really uh, phenomenal childhood. It was the kind of town where everybody looked out for everybody. Um, everybody even looked out for everybody else's kids. Um, farming, predominantly agricultural community. Community. Um, and, you know, I think I had in my elementary class, there were 10 kids wow. and we transitioned. Yeah, we transitioned. Um, it was actually a parochial school. And then I transitioned to the public school and middle school. And, and I mean, I think my graduating class was like 100, 103. Um, so just really a, a very small, tight knit community. And um, I had a great opportunity. I think I even took it for granted back then of growing up on Lake McConaughey. And if people aren't familiar with Lake McConaughey, it is the largest lake in the state of Nebraska. So um, really close to uh, Colorado, but uh, got to enjoy everything that that offered in the summer and uh, had the opportunity to learn to how to ski and stuff when I was really little and really didn't know, you know, until I got a lot bigger that I wasn't like living on an ocean or something. I just thought it was just super cool. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it was a really, it was a really awesome, awesome upbringing. And it was, um, also the kind of upbringing where, as I, as I mentioned before, you know, everybody, uh, kind of bonded together, um, as a community, if, if something happened or if, or, it, you know, both if something great happened and if something sad happened. So, um, yeah. I'm very fortunate, fortunate to have experienced that. Yeah. And um, well, let's just talk a little bit about your parents, too. Um, I know your mother very well, never had the opportunity to meet your father. Um, but let's let's talk about them just a little. For sure. So um, I'm an only child and um, my father was an attorney. Um, he passed away in 2001, but um, we were extremely close. And I like to say that probably one of the reasons that I 
chose the path that I did and we'll get into my career and things like yeah. that. But both of my parents really at an early age, just because I was an only child and surrounded by adults for all of the time of hundred percent of the time, most, most of the time, um, unless, you know, we had kids over and stuff um, or I was at school was that they had this really strong um, social justice mindset and advocacy mindset. Yeah. So um, for instance, my mother started the first alternative school um, in Ogallala to help um, students that maybe just didn't fit in the mainstream mm -hmm. public school system who needed extra help. And um, my father um, was a defense attorney. And so I would set for hours and hours with him. I remember being a little girl and setting for hours and hours with him, having him like retell court cases where, you know, he, he helped um, these individuals who were wrongfully accused. And so understanding kind of this, you know, in my mind, and I say that because my first love is, is English, I'm an English teacher. Um, and uh, was that, you know, he was kind of like my Atticus Finch, where, where you know, this very known um, understanding that not everyone is treated equal, and that I needed to be very, very careful, you know, that I stood up for um, the underdog. And so that was just so reverberated in my house over and over again that, you know, um, there are prejudices, there is discrimination, um, not everything is always fair or, or sure. equitable as how it should be. And so since you've been given some of these privileges, you, you need to have a strong voice and stand up for others who can't yeah. stand up for themselves. And um, I'm very blessed that, um, you know, my mother is, as you say, she loves you too, but um, you know, my, my mom, she won't care because she celebrates this, but she's 61 and she's still advocating for, yeah. for at-risk youth in the state of Nebraska. And um, I have an aunt that, that um, is doing the same thing as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just kind of this really strong, um, this really strong passion to, to help others who, who need, need sure. help. Yeah. Sure. Well, you, um, fast forward, you went to college, University of Lincoln, um, graduated with, um, you're, you're looking at going into maybe the ad sales, yeah. um, area. And I love, I love when I, um, you said, so you, you were working um, someplace and Tom Osborne came and spoke to you about his organization, Teammates. And that just kind of changed everything for you. So talk about that experience and, and kind of the mentoring piece. Yeah, absolutely. So I went, you know, and I, lo I love my community and um, I love Western Nebraska. Um, but I, when I graduated, I was ready. I was ready to go. I was going to go to Lincoln, the big city. Um, so I, you know, I left and um, in 2005. And so yeah, and I wanted nothing to do. I actually, um, besides my father, come from a whole host of educators. I mean, a really right. long line of um, a lot of them, you know, were Nebraska born and went to the Kearney State, which it used to be back in the day, which was kind of um, known to be a teacher's college. And that was what you did. And um, my even my grandmother totally preached um, you know, wanted all of her daughters to be teachers. And so it was right. just a profession that was really respected in my family. And I wanted nothing, zero, zilcho, nothing, nada, nothing to do with it. <laughs> like I had just yeah. seen, um, you know, first of all, I, I know I'll be very honest. I had seen family members and how, uh, you know, how they were treated and just some of the obstacles, some of the bureaucracy. So I, I didn't, I didn't want to go into education. Yeah. And, but, I, um, but I love how this experience with Tom, um, that, yes. that actually started, that changed, that changed the direction of your life. It changed the trajectory of my life. So I was actually working at Sandhills Publishing and I had an internship, a great internship um, in college. And they asked some of their top um, sales individuals to come and listen to Tom speak about teammates. And yes. um, I'd heard a little bit about teammates, but wasn't sure. Anyway, to make a long story short, um, myself and a girlfriend ended up signing up and um, I got really, really close to my uh, mentee and um, really, truly was a young lady that had struggled um, her entire life. Um, yeah. 
and uh, had, had come from an adoptive situation, um, was actually a, a adopted from Russia and had come from an adopted situation and had um, a, a myriad of, of issues that she was dealing with from um, depression and some mental health, some mental health instability, but um, really kind of, we did all kinds of fun stuff together. I mean, we went to the Humane Society and I saw how she interacted with the animals and how that kind of changed her. And I took her to Jazzercise with me. And I really kind of, for the first time, I think um, in my life, uh, it kind of clicked and I said, wow, this is, while I love doing ad sales and I think that this is great for some people, I feel like I need a, that this is quite potentially my purpose and then I need a bigger purpose. Cause I, I saw the change, not just within her, but I saw it in myself. Sure, so sure. that's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I want to um, fast forward a little bit. Cause again, you, you got into teaching and, and you were teaching at a school in Lincoln that was an alternative school. And you can totally correct me um, if I'm, putting out misinformation, but I like the story that you shared with us about Tyrone and Nate. And yes. that to me is such an impactful story. So could you just elaborate a little bit on that? Cause it isn't, it's in, it's in the article, but Absolutely. I just would love you to yeah. share about that. Yeah, no. Um, so yes. Yeah. So I, um, my first introduction to education was um, I, I was a teacher at an alternative program in, in Lincoln. And as you said, and um, these two particular young men, I mean, I was straight out of college. Um, and once again, um, you know, coming from a very small community, while I was very blessed that my parents, um, you know, encouraged me to travel and things like that, it was a very diverse school. So it's a very diverse setting for me for the first time, yeah. lots of different students from lots of different backgrounds and cultures, which I loved, but it was kind of the first introduction. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and I really had to gain their respect. And um, this one program that we were doing actually was with youth, um, young men, who were in the juvenile justice system and they were actually contracting with our school so that they could earn credits yeah. um, and hopefully turn their life around. Um, and I just remember, you so know, two brothers, right? Yes. So, so Nate yeah. and Tyrone. Yeah. So, and this is just, I guess, for every teacher that feels like they are not making a difference or whatever, this is my, always my go to story. Um, but uh, two brothers that were raised in the exact same home. To make a long story short, they were from North Omaha. Um, very uh, prevalent historical cyclical gang violence within their family. Um, both very talented in their own ways. Um, I, you know, I remember reading both of their poetry and things like that. But it is kind of the story of the fork in the road where um, Nate's brother. Um, Tyrone was actually shot multiple times, seven times on a, on, his, on their porch in North Omaha. The state of Nebraska actually paid for them to be moved to, um, Lincoln. He miraculously right. survives, um, and, and is, you know, in, in this program to kind of get them back on their feet, sure. um, stop the cycle. Yeah. And, um, I just remember, you know, um, working with both of them and unfortunately, um, Tyrone, who um, was the one that was actually hurt, as I said, miraculously survives and then um, makes, a, a, is doing good for a while and then kind of relapses and makes uh, a, more of a negative choice, goes back, ends up goes back to Omaha, ends up going to a party and things get out of hand and he shoots someone and he is in the penitentiary. Right, right. Um, and then the, the other brother. And then Nate um, is graduated, was extremely successful in the program, is now a barber, um, went to Joseph's College of Beauty in Lincoln, is a barber, is a contributing member to society and has yeah. a child and a baby. And he sends me a Christmas card every year. Yeah. So um, I think that that story resonates with me because oftentimes as teachers or mentors or people in the community, um, you know, sometimes we don't know, um, 
you know, exactly what it is that will change someone's mind or change someone's heart. But it, it's a good example because both of these young men were raised in the same household. And, you know, Tyrone could have made just as just of, of great of a choice as Nate did. Um, but I'm so very happy that Nate didn't go down that same road. Yeah. And that, um, you know, so that so there absolutely, there absolutely is hope. Right. And that what I encourage my teachers um, that I talk to and that I mentor every day is that we just can't give up right. because one is still saving one. You know what right. I mean? I mean yeah. It's still a victory. It's still a success. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break because then when we come back, we're going to talk about um, your, you know, your platform, Every Child Matters. Um, so we're going to dive into that when we get back. So folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. So we are back here with the amazing Jaquel Lane. Um, Jaquel has had quite a journey, but I'm so excited to talk about uh, your platform advocacy. Am I saying it right? Every child matters and then preventing teen suicide and reducing bull 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 bullying. That's yes. something you've been really passionate about. And you, I've just seen you bring that to the forefront, especially over the last year or year and a half or so. So let's talk about that. We're, how did all, how did that all start? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I, I, I've been teaching since 2009. And so one of the things that I've really seen in our school systems that is difficult to address, and it's also kind of difficult to know, um, the protocol to follow for it, but is, is bullying, um, yeah with kids and we've seen it especially in the last um year unfortunately with covid and things like that that cyberbullying has really arisen yeah. and so um i really wanted um to tackle this head on because i've lost um a, I've, I've lost students to suicide and i've sat across um the table from parents who who have had to dealt with that which is absolutely tragic and i yeah. just once again, if we can get the knowledge out there and we can save one child at a time, it's going to be worth it. Um, unfortunately, you know, students oftentimes, because of the home lives that they live in, um, are not taught social skills, soft social skills, how to be a good friend. Maybe they're from a home that um, has abusive tendencies and things like that. And so uh, a real problem that I saw as well was that we were labeling children in the school system um, um, quote unquote, as as bullies, or or we were sending them out of the classroom as problematic, and what this leads to is kind of a, a negative, intrinsic feeling that they have within themselves that now they're now they're bad. So kind of changing that verbiage um, for kids, especially to say, you know what, you're not bad, you're you're wonderful, and you can be a good friend. Let let me show you how. Let me take your take your hand and show you how. I don't think that any child wakes up and says. I want to bully someone today. I don't think that any child wakes up and says, I want to be angry. But unfortunately, due to the circumstances that some of them are dealing with at home, um, they need a safe, they need some um, ways to express themselves in a positive and healthy way. And they need individuals to teach them how to do that. And Jaquel, I mean, I really see you kind of trailblazing the way with this because I, you know, just in my conversations with you, but also um, just, you know, kind of what I see around me that, that teachers are aware of this, but you're, you just like dive, you just dove right in and said, I, I dove I'm right in. <laughs> going to do something about this. So, um, I want to talk about your role. Uh, and I, you know, I'm looking at my notes over here. So, um, 
as you miss Douglas County for America and then you were Miss Nebraska for America. And that was something that you, you know, you, I know you, you soul search and like really looked at that and then you decided to do it and it, and you were amazing and actually was a voice and brought a lot of things to the forefront. So talk a little bit about that experience that just recent, I mean, that's happened in the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was actually approached by a dear friend about it. She said um, uh, she thought that, that I would be great with my platform and things and the fact that I was kind of living it and in the trenches of the classroom. And she'd seen some of my advocacy with at-risk youth. And she said, you know, do, do you, have you ever thought about this? And so um, I did. I did a lot of soul searching and I really wanted it to be um, such a positive thing. And I wanted it to really bring light to my platform. That was what it was about was about the kids and the fact of getting awareness out about mental health um, help for our children and also um, suicide prevention. So um, it was an absolute wonderful experience. I mean, I can say that uh, I've made so many connections that have, I feel, really catapulted this message and, and catapulted my platform in ways that I uh, could never have imagined. Um, I, you know, was able to get a, a brand new opportunity and, and uh, a position with the Nebraska State Education um, Association. And so, you know, just having the ability to be in the forefront of, of implementing policies and yeah. procedures and making lives of our children and our teachers in the state of Nebraska better, I really truly don't feel um, that I would have maybe, uh, that that would have happened as fast without, sure. without, my, without my experience um, with Miss Nebraska for America. So it was wonderful. There's tons of also, it was so empowering as a woman because there's so many women throughout um, the United States that are just absolutely remarkable. And as you know, um, surrounding yourselves, yourself with, with people who are just doing phenomenal things is, it makes you want to be better. It makes you want to strive to be better. And so it was, it was a great experience. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, when you're talking, I actually just get goosebumps when you talk about just kind of how you're able to, um, you're bringing this even to more of the for forefront when, where you're able to connect. And I was going to say, looking at the choices that you make, that you've made in your life and how they brought you, that, that they keep every choice you make brings you to some other place. And, um, and, by, and if you would have chose not to do that, I mean, you're still amazing. You're still doing wonderful things, but, but something really great happened from that. Absolutely. And I love to tell young people that too, because I think we can fixate so much on, you know, choosing a career right now or kind of pigeonholing them in the path. You know what? Um, you're going to find your, your journey, your specific yeah. journey. And there's certainly a reason for everything. I mean, for a long time, you know, I, I thought that I wanted to be an attorney, that I should go back and, and go to law school like my dad. The fact of the matter is, and I'll, I'll, shoot this statistic out really quick, but um, data from the Government Accountability Office tells us that Black students and students with disabilities are more likely to receive harsh school discipline than their counterparts, so um, than Caucasian students or any other students. Wow. And so that's something that needs to change. That's something mm -hmm. that in the state of Nebraska um, needs to change. Um, yeah. And so I've seen that, um, you know, and I'm comfortable talking about implicit bias and the fact that, you know, um, we're not all raised the same. I'm from population 5,000, Ogallala, Nebraska. Yeah. You know, I'll be very honest, when I grew up there, it's changed now um, and is more diverse, but there was not a lot of diversity. How can we love one another and teach our children to love one another? Well, I'm picking up your book because I want to make sure we've got just a couple minutes left. I just want to make sure, so this book um, is out. It's called From Bullying to Bestie. And uh, People can I mention your web, website, jacquelllane.com, though I know that's flashing, um, you know, it'll be on the, the notes and on the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. But talk about this book. And we have about 90 seconds left. So tell us a little bit about this book because it's a beautiful yeah. book. I'm, I'll, I'm going to kind of go through it while you're talking, okay? Thank you so much. And it, there is some significance. My very first dog was named Charlie and he's a Cavalier King Charles and there's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel on the front. Um, you know what? This book was created out of love. Um, I wanted to give school counselors, teachers, parents, and mentors um, a way to 
talk to children about how they can face their emotions in healthy ways. So there's everything from how do we do yoga, how do we um, interact and be a good friend to one another. Um, and it kind of is a cool way for kids that's created in a child's language um, for a school counselor or a parent or a mentor um, to use with kids when they see kind of aggressive behavior being exhibited. Yeah. Um, that can say, you know what, I can see that you're hurting right now. Let's talk about this and choose another option, whether that's through art therapy, um, positive affirmations, anything like that. Because we really, we haven't really talked to kids about that or even about mindfulness yeah. until more recently. So that's what that is. Thank you. So people can find you, jaquellelane.com, and your podcast is called? Education with an Edge, and it's produced by Herdat Media. And also, uh, anywhere else we um, uh, Facebook? Absolutely, yes. So um, I have Education with an Edge is on Facebook, my podcast. Um, you can also follow me, Jaquel Lane, um, on Facebook as well. And I'm on LinkedIn um, as Jaquel Lane. Um, M Ed, so Masters of Education. I'm very proud of that. Um, but um, yeah, those are my those are my socials. Okay. Well, you are definitely a game changer, Jaquel, and I am so honored to know you. Thank you for coming on and having this conversation with me. It's it's going to be people are watching it on Metro TV and also on my pad, podcast, Contribution Rocks. So I look forward to see what to see what you're going to be doing next. So thank you again. Well, thank you. And you are a dear, dear friend of mine. And I couldn't, I couldn't love you more, Andy Hoig. So thank you very much. Likewise, my friend. And everyone have a great, safe week. We'll see you back here. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to check out spiritofomaha.com. The latest issue of Metro Magazine, our Celebrating Women issue, is online now. You can also find out all the upcoming charity events and visit us on Facebook. Be sure to like us, Metro Magazine, all one word. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you back here next week.